to chat about ransomware, how to stop it. We'll discuss the impacts of ransomware briefly, uh, show some of the attack vectors, the main attack vectors, and uh, base our recommendations on how to stop ransomware based on those attack vectors. Uh, this is now not how to mitigate uh, once a ransomware attack has happened, uh, like backups, for example. This is really a presentation that's going to talk about um, how to prevent the uh, uh, attack from becoming successful. So uh, ransomware has impacted uh, many types of organizations, uh, both here in the U.S. and around the world. Uh, lots of state and local government uh, entities, healthcare providers, uh, large, even large international enterprises, and uh, IT managed service providers, and of course they're going after the service providers' customers. Um, and we can see here just a brief graph on the impact on state and local government. Uh, we can see uh, the increase from 2018 to 2019. Uh, it doubled. This was uh, 104 was just the beginning of December, so uh, we expect that uh, the number, actual number in December was probably uh, doubled 2018. 2020, uh, anyone's guess, but it's uh, not slowing down, so we might see another doubling uh, occur. Um, attacks have been quite expensive, uh, as you can see here, some examples from uh, last year. Um, cost in Atlanta was well over $17 million, uh, in direct costs. Uh, some places have uh, been offline for, uh, for months, and uh, also some cities have paid the ransom um, requested. Um, assuming that uh, that would just be paid by the insurance companies. Of course, the insurance companies will raise a race for those groups, and uh, that will be a, a cost factor also. So definitely the risk is, um, as uh, not just cities and towns, but enterprises offer more digital services uh, to the public, those are definitely more at risk uh, with a uh, ransomware attack. Uh, will it stop? Um, well, as uh, Willie Sutton, a uh, bank robber, was uh, purported to have said when asked why he robs banks, he said, well, that's where the money is. And uh, so far, these ransomware attacks have been uh, relatively easy to implement, and uh, they have been quite uh, remunerative, uh, quite financially rewarding. Um, this number was tracked by a European organization. Um, they were tracking the uh, Bitcoin. Uh, wallets and uh, most of this happened between 100 million happened between 2016 2017 um, it's become a little bit more hard uh, more difficult to track today um, but uh, quite a lot of money involved uh, very room numerative for the uh, attackers and uh, of course that's not the only thing obviously to cities and states and organizations enterprises it's lots of loss services to either the citizens or the customers. So uh, definitely more than just the actual money involved. Um, how are they happening? Here are some of the uh, uh, main attack vectors. Um, uh, remote desktop protocol and remote desktop services. Uh, these are targeting unpatched internet facing servers and workstations. Um, email attachments uh, targeting unpatched uh, applications, operating systems even sometimes Microsoft macros. Uh, so drive-by websites um, uh, hosting exploit kits. So an exploit kit is a uh, basically a set of uh, exploits. Uh, by an exploit is its code that basically searches for a vulnerability. If it finds a vulnerability, it, it attacks that and uh, creates a presence on that machine and uh, can be elevated basically to uh, scan, scan the internal network. Um, and basically these drive-by uh, websites are um, uh, made vulnerable by these exploit kits. Um, they can be either fake websites or they can be compromised legitimate websites and they're essentially targeting uh, unpatched uh, uh, web browsers plugins. So the typical ones are Adobe Flash, Oracle Java. And uh, the key thing here is that there's no user action required other than visiting the uh, the uh, compromised uh, website by the user. They don't actually need to click on anything on that website. Uh, a slight modification of this is malvertising where the exploit kit is actually delivered by uh, uh, online ads uh, using some of the large uh, ad uh, networks. So again, no user action is required just visiting that particular website uh, 
with a uh, unpatched web browser, I should say, or plugins. Um, how to stop it? We recommend you focus on the basics, um, and we'll talk more about the basic CIS controls. This is the uh, Center for Internet Security. Um, also, this process needs to be automated, and keep in mind it does not need to be complicated or expensive to, uh, to do this. So very, very doable by all organizations, state and local governments, uh, uh, enterprises, both large and small. So how to stop these breaches uh, based on the attack vectors. Um, keep in mind that uh, the main thing, these are the key, one of the key elements, keep the operating systems, web browsers, plugins patched. Okay, so essentially no zero day exploits have been used by ransomware over the, over the last number of years. Uh, zero day is again an exploit with uh, no known um, uh, uh, patch. Um, and that has, I should reiterate, that has not been used by ransomware. Ransomware has used known vulnerabilities uh, with uh, known patches, patches available for those vulnerabilities. Um, so really no need for machine learning, other uh, what we call shiny objects uh, that are common in the uh, security business. Um, you know, just get the browsers, get the applications, the operating systems patched. Uh, also remove end-of-life software. Uh, these, uh, again, are not being supported by the software publishers, so there are no patches available for these vulnerabilities. Uh, limit the use of admin privileges. This is important not to give all users um, admin privileges, uh, high admin privileges, because that allows uh, the software uh, more privileges to run, the uh, attack software more privileges to run both on the local machines and potentially also on your network. So make them most people regular users, not admins. And uh, the last one is implement secure configurations. It's a little more detailed, more complex, uh, uh, but we can send you some information on that. And these are described by the Center for Internet Security Benchmarks, the USGCB as US government, uh, configuration benchmarks and also the major vendors Microsoft Red Hat have their own uh, secure configurations. So as far as the uh, we recommend that you as a start follow the uh, CIS Center for Internet Security basic controls. Um, they're actually based on uh, their analysis of all uh, breaches that occurred over um, I think a decade of attacks that 85% of all these uh, breaches could be prevented uh, by implementing the uh, first five controls and 94% of these breaches will be prevented by implementing all 20 controls. Those are a little bit more complex but certainly start with the first uh, four or five controls. Here they are. Um, inventory, knowing what uh, hardware assets you have and making sure that those are authorized. Also the same with software, making sure that you know what software you have installed, what versions, and making sure that those are authorized. Uh, continuously checking for vulnerabilities and managing those vulnerabilities, particularly making sure that your um, critical vulnerabilities and end-of-life um, applications are, uh, are being patched or being removed. Uh, controlled use of admin privileges, we've talked about that. And then the uh, secure configurations uh, 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 from the uh, CIS and other vendors. Uh, Bellar can help, a uh, single tool, uh, central repository updating these con this configuration, security configuration data on a daily basis. Uh, does it for all of your machines, servers, virtual machines, whether they're remote systems or cloud-based systems, uh, can be, uh, is automatically updated daily or more frequently. And it's very fast to deploy, little if any maintenance, and uh, we think very, very cost effective, uh, also very automated. Uh, here's basic architecture. I won't go into great detail, but this can be run on premise. Uh, this can be run on uh, our customer's cloud, uh, or this can be hosted by, uh, by Bellarc. So in summary, uh, we believe, uh, and as do many, that ransomware will continue because it's uh, easy to exploit and quite uh, new, uh, financially rewarding to the attackers. So unless we make this uh, more difficult, these attacks more difficult and more expensive, um, this will likely continue. So what's the solution? Implement the basic CIS controls, monitor on a continuous basis and automate. 
and we do have a, a, a white paper on this topic uh, with uh, more details and also a longer presentation so please feel free to send an email to info at bellarc.com and uh, we thank you very much.